G'day guys, this particular video is going to be dedicated to solving a fairly simple truss problem. So, using method of joints, I'm going to try and find the internal forces in each member. So that means we're asked to find the internal forces in this member, this member, and this member. Now before I get started on analysis and all that crazy stuff, I want to really break things down and tell you step by step how to solve problems like this. So your method should be, in any particular truss problem, it should be, first, you analyze, analyze the geometry. Right, so that means we basically find unknown lengths of the truss and we fill in angles and stuff like that. That's the first step I usually like to go about solving fairly simple truss problems. The second step is to analyze the free body diagram of the whole truss. Whole truss. So that means we replace these reactions with, sorry, we place these supports with reaction forces, and then we figure out what those reaction forces are using a free body diagram of the whole truss. If that doesn't make sense to you, that's okay. I'll show you what I mean. And then our last step is to use specifically method of joints, which means that we use a free body diagram for certain joints, certain joints. And it's okay if you don't really know what that means. I'm going to be showing you step by step, but this is the general process I'm going to be using to solve this problem. Okay, well, step one, analyze the geometry. Let's find out what this length is right here. Well, we know this is going to be equal to the square root of 5 squared minus 4 squared, right? Because this is a triangle, we're just using Pythagoras. And that's going to be equal to the square root of 25 minus 16, which is 9, which is going to be 3 meters. Okay, so that's the length of this side of the truss. So far, so good. Now let's figure out what this angle is here, this angle theta. Well, we know, well, we can figure out sine theta. We know sine theta is going to be equal to 4 divided by 5, which means we know that theta is going to be equal to inverse sine 4 divided by 5, which is going to be 53.13 using your calculator. Okay, that's what theta is using trigonometry. So this step, already done. Okay, now let's go to the second step. Analyze the free body diagram of the whole truss. So let me actually just redraw our truss just here and let's make it a little bit smaller to make some space, right? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace these supports with reaction forces. So C, because it's a roller support, can only produce a reaction force in the vertical, right? Which is gonna be, I'll call it CY, okay? and a, this is a pin support, so that means it's going to produce reaction forces in the vertical, I'll call it AY, and in the horizontal, I'll call it AX. Now, are these all the external forces acting on this truss? Absolutely not. We've also got a 4 kilonewton force acting at joint B over here. This is 4 kilonewtons just here, right? I won't bother drawing in the dimensions because we already know them over here. But what we can do now is we can start analyzing this truss using the sum of forces must be equal to zero, right? This truss isn't accelerating, right? This is the whole point of statics, which means that the sum of forces must be zero. So let's do the sum of forces in the x direction must be equal to zero. Well, there's only two forces in the x direction. It's ax, right? And our four kilonewton force just here, and that must be equal to zero, which means AX must be equal to minus 4 kilonewtons. This is the value of AX, right? So you can tell here that when I drew AX to the right, you can tell that it's actually 4 kilonewtons to the left, right? Which makes sense in your intuition. Just imagine this thing being pushed here. You'd imagine the reaction force must be pushing back here, right? Just using your intuition. Okay, enough about that. Let's do the sum of forces in the Y direction must be equal to zero. Well, there's only two forces in the y direction, and we know that ay plus cy must be equal to zero. Not much we can do about that yet, right? Let's now do the sum of moments about any point, it's up to us, is equal to zero. I'm going to choose the sum of moments about point A because I think it will be easier, right? And I'm going to take clockwise as positive. Okay, well, the sum of moments about A, there's only two forces which produce moments. It's going to be this one, which is going to produce a moment of 4 times by its perpendicular distance, which is going to be 3 meters. 
and there's going to be this force producing a negative counterclockwise moment. So it's going to be minus Cy times by its corresponding perpendicular distance, which is going to be four meters. And that's going to be equal to zero. Now let me resize this so it all fits in. Okay, now you can tell just from basic algebra here, you bring the Cy times four over there, divide by the four, Cy must be equal to three kilonewtons. Okay, so this is another one of the reaction forces just here. Now we can plug it into this equation just here to find out what Ay was. We know that Ay is gonna be equal to minus Cy, which means it's gonna be minus three kilonewtons, okay? So far, so good. By analyzing the whole free body diagram of the truss, we found out the reaction forces from our, uh, reaction forces from our supports. So this is done right now. Now we're left with the final step of doing the free body diagram of certain joints. Now this is what this is what method of joints is, right? We we choose a joint and then we analyze it using a free body diagram. Now it's up to us which joint we choose. I'm going to choose. Um, I'm going to choose joint B. Why not? So let's do joint joint B. Let's analyze this joint. Well, this is the joint, and let's make a cut. Let's make a cut around this joint and analyze the free body diagram. Well, this is part of the member just here, and we've made a cut section just around this joint like this. And because we've made the cut, that means the internal forces will be popping out. We've got internal forces BC here. This is the internal force in bar BC, and we've got an internal force AB just here, right? And of course, the geometry says that this angle here is theta. Oh, and we've also got a four kilonewton force acting on joint B just here as well. Okay, so that's the, that's the free body diagram. Now let's start analyzing this. Well, we know that the sum of forces the sum of forces in the x direction must be equal to zero, right? This joint isn't accelerating, so that means the sum of forces must be equal to zero, which means that four, right? Because this four kilonewton force is acting purely to the right, plus BC, or the component of BC in the horizontal direction, which is gonna be BC times by, let's see, it'll be sine theta. Sine theta is gonna be equal to zero. And we can solve this because we know theta and we know we know four is four and we know that's going to be equal to minus five kilonewtons. So this is the value. This is the value of BC. Now, I won't be talking about tension or compression yet. I'll do that at the end of the video. But it's it's at this point, I'll just like pique your interest saying it's quite interesting. There's a negative sign here. I wonder what that means. Anyway, now let's do the sum the sum of forces in the y direction is equal to zero. Okay, well, we know that both of these internal forces are have negative components in the y direction, so let's approach them individually. AB is purely in the negative direction, right? It's purely downwards. And BC is downwards as well. It's gonna be BC, and the component is BC cosine theta, and that's gonna be equal to zero. Right? And we already know BC, we figured it was minus five. So that means we plug it into here and realize that AB is gonna be equal to, let's see, it'll be um, minus, minus five cosine 53.13, which is just three kilonewtons. That was easy. Okay, so that is the internal force in bar AB. Okay, now it's amazing. We've only analyzed one joint and we've already found the internal forces in two members. It's up to us which joint we evaluate next, but I'm gonna choose joint, I'm gonna analyze joint, uh, what do we want? I'm gonna choose joint A. It really doesn't matter. In fact, you could verify your solutions by doing joint C as well if you wanted to, but we only need one more joint. I'm gonna do joint A, and this is what the free body diagram looks like. I'm gonna make a cut around here. So of course we've got these two bits of members sticking out and we've made a cut along here and here and presto the internal forces are sticking out. This is going to be this is going to be AC and this right here is going to be uh, AB, the one we actually just found out. 
And, and what makes this really interesting is we've got our um, reaction forces acting in this joint too. We've got a y up here and we've got a x here. Okay. Well, this is quite an easy one to analyze because it's all at right angles. So we know that the sum of forces in the x direction must be equal to zero, which means that we know that a x, that's a force in the x direction, plus a c, that's another force in the x direction, must be equal to zero. Okay, which means that we know that a x, sorry, a c, a c must be equal to, well, let me fix that color up, it's a c must be equal to minus a x, and minus a x is just going to be four kilonewtons. Okay, so we're actually done. We figure out all of the internal forces, right? But just to like confirm um, our answer, we can actually figure out a b here as well. Um, we know that the sum of forces in the y direction is equal to zero, which means that we know that a b plus a y must be equal to zero, which means that we know that a b is going to be equal to negative a y, which is just three. Notice this is purely consistent with our answer above, right? That's just another way we could um, confirm that we haven't made a stupid mistake along the way. Okay, now let me just quickly resize this to make some space. Okay, I've resized that little image just there. Now let's talk about tension and compression. Now you may have noticed that I've assumed that every single internal force in each of these members is under tension, right? Notice they're pointing away just here. That means as you can imagine, this small bit is actually being stretched outwards. So it's under tension, same with this one, same with this one, same with this one, right? Which means, if you're clever about it, which means that this minus sign is really important because it denotes that the force is actually minus five kilonewtons, which means it's five kilonewtons in the other direction, right? And that means it's under compression here. This is under tension because it's positive. This is under tension because it's positive. And this is under compression because it's negative. So to, to really hammer this in, I'm just gonna write it down as a final summary. AB, right, that's this force, is gonna be equal to three kilonewtons in tension and AC is going to be equal to four kilonewtons in tension, but BC, this one just here, is going to be equal to five kilonewtons in compression. This is actually our final answer. So make sure in any exam you actually put tension, tension, compression in all of them. Okay, so this is our final answer just here. There we go. I hope that made sense, guys. You may have noticed that um, it didn't matter which one of these sub joints we analyzed to begin with. That's because this is a fairly simple problem. Um, in later problems, you have to be really, really clever about which joint you analyze first, and I'll be showing you how to do that in the next problem. Cheers.